Good morning to all my YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter friends. Just wanted to take a moment while sitting in the hotel, getting ready for a presentation, to talk about scales and keys. So this is going to be very old school because I'm going to write this out right quick and show you how I usually uh, go through arranging songs or interpreting songs that I hear. So one thing is the uh, understanding uh, the circle of fifths. And if one has a good understanding of the circle of fifths, you know that the uh, basically um, this uh, helps you understand what notes are sharp and flat in each key. And when you work around the circle, it's a fifth away. Fifth, uh, for example, from a scale perspective, if you were on the piano and you played C, D, E, F, G, that may not be the right note for C, but uh, knowing that G is five notes away or fifth away is how it works. So you start out in the key of C and the key of C has zero sharps or flats. Then you move from C up a fifth to the key of G, and G has <clears throat> one sharp. And then you go to the key of D, D is gonna have two, then you'll go up a fifth to A, A has three, you go up a fifth to uh, the key of E, E has four, a fifth up to the key of B, and B has five, fifth up from B is F sharp, it has six sharps, then you go up to the key of C sharp, which has uh, seven sharps. Okay, so now when you uh, now the next question that one would ask is that okay, if this is how the circle of fifths work, uh, then how do I know what notes are sharp? Well, I'll just write out the actual order right now, and it's going to be basically they're sharp in this order: F, C, G, D, A, then E and then B. Alright, so that's the order of sharps. F, C, G, D, A, E, B. For me, an old church guy, I usually say following Christ gives direction and eternal benefits. So, the way that works is in the key of C, there will be no sharps or flats. In the key of G, there will be one. It will be F sharp. In the key of D, it will be uh, F sharp and C. Key of A, F, C, and G will be sharp. E, F, C, G, D, and A, and so forth, all the way around. When you go counterclockwise on the circle of fifths, it actually, or actually on this circle of fifths, it actually moves in fourth. So if you go uh, C, D, E, F, has a sound of here comes the bride, you'll go up from C to F, which will be a fourth away, then a fourth, and, and then when you're going counterclockwise, you'll have flats. So when you're going um, uh, clockwise, they'll have the notes. The scales will have sharps. So C to F, a fourth up from F is B flat. It'll have two. A fourth up from B flat will be E flat. It'll have three flats. And a fourth up from E flat is A flat. It'll have four flats. Okay. Then we start getting into what we call enharmonic things. Enharmonic means that the exact same tone or same note, different name. So a fourth up from A flat is D flat, which will have five flats, and then you'll go a fourth up from D flat will be G flat, which will have six flats. But notice D flat is the same as C sharp, G flat is the same as F sharp. Then you'll finally get to the key of C flat, which has seven flats. Okay, and the order of sharps or the order of flats is just the order of sharps backwards. So B E A. D, G, C, F. So I'll write it down here. B, E, A, D, G, C, F. All right. So that's the order of flats. So these are the order that the notes are sharp. So we'll call this sharps order. And then we'll get here, and this is the order that the notes are flat. And we'll call this the flats uh, order here. Okay, now one thing is uh, is that you know in the key of F they'll have one flat. It'll be uh, the key of B. In the key of B flat you'll have two flats. It'll be B flat and E flat. E flat will have three. B flat, E flat, A flat. All right. So that's how the circle of fifths work. So I'm gonna pick a quick song right quick, and uh, and just kind of show you that how one can actually write this out without necessarily being in an instrument. So if um, I did a video a while back on So Beautiful uh, by Music Soul Child, and so basically it's in the key of, uh, of F, 
And so the F scale is going to have these notes in the scale. It'll be F, G, A, B flat, because it has one flat. Then we'll have um, C, D, E, F. So if I put numbers to those to kind of get me used to listening for intervals, it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, back to 1. All right, so I think mm, this might be F. I have relative pitch. I don't have perfect pitch. So if that is F, I'm going to go low. 1, 2, 1, 1. Ugh, I can't go that low. It's too early in the morning. Okay, here we go. One two one one three one one four one one five one one six one one seven one 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 or one eight one. So that's how I hear my notes. Okay. Now, typically on your one, your four, and your five, those are going to be major chords. I'm just going to go M A J. Those are going to be major, and then on your twos, your threes and your six it's going to be minor sounds so all right and then your seven is going to be diminished we'll get more into that kind of sound later then we're back to one okay so those are basically the notes that you usually have on the scale all right the pattern that i listen for on music soul child is if i put them in four four time four four times is basically four beats to measure and the quarter note if you know what a quarter note looks like it looks like this it's a solid note it looks like that in 4-4 four, four time, the top four means that there's four beats inside of each measure, and the bottom four means that this type of note gets one beat. So anytime you see that, you know, ba, dot, dot, dot. So then I have what we call half notes that I can stick inside of here just to let folks know when the, when the chords are going to change. Half note is like a solid note, I mean a hollow note with a stem. All right, so we'll have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then basically this pattern will repeat. All right. Okay. So now when I listen for uh, the notes, it has this sound. One, two, two, and it goes to the six. Two, three, four, five. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. So two, six, three, four, three, two. So there's the pattern. Two to the six to the three, then the four, three, and then it repeats, all right? So therefore, since I'm in F, my first chord is gonna be a G minor type voicing, and my second one will be, my six will be a D minor voicing, and um, my three will be an A minor voicing, and then my four will be B flat major, B flat major, and then my three will be A minor. All right. All right. So that's pretty much like the vibe of like looking at this table. And I'm not necessarily that. This is more, this stuff just helps you communicate. So if I were going to tell a band how uh, so beautiful it's going to play, I'm just going to say, you know, two, six, to the three, to the four, three, two, six, three, to the four. Three, and then most people that are familiar with the number six system will know that those twos will be minor. But let's just say that someone's not familiar with the number system. Then I have to kind of sing and outline uh, the harmonies of that. So I might go, Now, now that we have those outlined, the band's pretty much ready to roll. And now you see pretty much a general idea how we start picking the number system to work out songs. And knowing things like this helps your rehearsal go uh, extremely fast a whole lot more efficient. You can get a whole lot done and start working on the presentation of the material and not necessarily having to work so long on what chords are actually in the song. You start listening for bass lines and things like that and then you can start communicating these ideas on songs pretty quickly. But anyway, 
I had a second here at the hotel, thought I'd just share a little information with how I kind of started arranging, thinking through songs. Again, we really hear it first. This theory stuff just helps us communicate. Okay, so we don't get so caught up on theory just to know theory. It's just basically like the English language. It's another language that helps one be able to communicate their uh, musical ideas and thoughts efficiently. All right, hope you're all having a great, uh, great day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.